all stories have three elements. They have a character, a plot, and a moral. Uh, you don't get a story without that. Now, uh, what's a, what makes a plot a plot? Um, I left my office, I walked over here, I began talking. Is that a plot? I mean, it's very exciting. I mean, you want to you pay to find out what happened next? You, make it a plot for me. Turn it into a plot. Make it a plot. The saber-toothed tiger out here, just outside here? Oh my God. <laughs> so then what happened? You're being followed by spies. <laughs> Wait, so I got a tiger in front of me, I got spies behind me? <laughs> All right, yeah, I won't ask who's spies, but I, yeah, but yeah, so then what happened? I ran away. And so, but then how did I get here? How did I get here? Come on. Oh, this is good. This is very good. This is very good. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I stepped out of the way and, hey, dinner. And so they went after the spies. That's very good. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, and, and they were so satiated, they fell asleep. And that's how I got here. That's kind of interesting. I mean, usually I, I want to make it so that the Khaleesi comes on her dragon and saves me. But, but we didn't have an opportunity for that in this story. Uh, sorry about Games, Game of Thrones, but what's the, what's the point here? When, when does the thing get interesting? A problem. See, not necessarily even conflict, but a problem. An interruption in the expected. You know, you're going along on your way to wherever, and boom, something happens. That's when we all lean forward. That's when we get interested. So why? What's at stake? Why does that call our interest, whereas before, it's boring? Why? What's going on? Yeah, but why? Why do you care? But why do you care? You're not in danger. So what? It's not you. I mean. Yeah, but why do you care what I'm going to do? Well, some do, and not everybody that pays for all the movies and books and novels and plays and songs that are all structured in the same way. Gives you another, gives you another strategy for the future. So next time you're confronted with a saber-toothed tiger and spies, you'll know exactly what to do. You have a good plan. Watching somebody else. Yeah. All right, look. How, ma how many, no, I mean, everybody sort of got it. I, I mean, how many times does the unexpected happen to you every day in little ways? I mean, the movie's sold out, or there's no seats left, or whatever it might be. And then there's big ways, right? People lose jobs. People get thrown out of school. Marriages break up. We lose loved ones and we, and we, that we can't be prepared for losing, but we have to deal with it. Isn't it the case that one of the critical dimensions of the human experience is to have to deal with the unexpected? To deal with that by definition for which we cannot be prepared? And we seem infinitely curious to figure out how to do that. Now, because we can identify with a protagonist, and we, we now understand this works through what's called mirror neurons, that when we observe somebody doing something, we can actually experience elements of it as if we were doing it. So when we identify with the protagonist, we're actually beginning to experience where the protagonist went, what values, sources he or she drew upon, where they get their hope, what the fear was. And so what we're learning is how to deal with that, not in a tactical sense, but in a much deeper way. And so the moral that a story teaches is not like haste makes waste, it's the experience of haste making waste. And that experience becomes part of our experience. The experience of the protagonist becomes part of our experience. So the moral that a story teaches is to the heart, not just to the head. Does this make sense? I mean, think about where'd you hear your first stories? From who? Yeah, so, so what were they, why were they telling you all those stories? I mean, to keep you busy, I have maybe, but. <laughs> no, Bruner found that 85% of the time parents spend with young children is in storytelling. Why? Connection. Why, but now think, parent, uh, people here that have kids, why do you tell those stories? It's instructive, isn't it? You know, there are stories like, let me tell you about Uncle Charlie. Uncle Charlie started out great. <laughs> but then he took a wrong turn. 
And you don't want to be like Uncle Charlie. Now, Aunt Harriet, she had it right. That's who you want. Every family has those stories all over the world. That's why our faith traditions teach through stories. That's why our cultures teach through stories. They are experiential. They have experiential emotional content, and therefore they become a resource, an emotional resource or moral resource for us. So this is kind of where the power of narrative lies, is that capacity to communicate hope, to create empathy, to enhance a sense of self-worth, to find values that sustain us and communicate those. Now, public narrative is a way of trying, of harnessing the power of narrative to the work of leadership. And it's a way of, of harnessing that first through what we call a story of self. And the story of self it draws on moments of experience because the core element, the, the basic unit of narrative is the moment. It's a moment of experience. I don't know if people saw Michelle saw the Democratic Convention last summer and Michelle Obama and Hillary Clinton, Clinton. Michelle Obama speaks entirely in narrative moments. You know, the thing with the big, the black cars and the guys with guns and she's talking to Barack about what are we gonna do or waking up in the White House, a house built by slaves. Everyone is a moment. Hillary couldn't share moments. And so we couldn't get the emotional content of what was going on. So the moment is the core unit. So a story of self is about reflecting on moments through which you learned what you care for and where you get your hope. What's your values? Where did your values come from? You know, and it's not like this thing about like, well, I always knew that I wanted to be a nuclear physicist. Oh, you came out of the womb with a little atom sign here or something. <laughs> no, it's experience teaches us that. But it's, it's accessing those ex <coughs> experiences to be able to communicate to others why we're, what we're, why we're called to what we're called to do. Why, why I'm here trying to exercise leadership. What got me here? A story of us is about how to use shared experience to bring alive shared values in those whom you hope to call to collective action. It's not a categorical us like everybody with green hair. It's an experiential us of shared experience. And the story of now is how to make, use narrative to make real a challenge, the challenge, an urgent challenge to those values that requires hopeful action now and a pathway to that action. So that's the self, the us, the now, and how they all work together. So it's not just a story of self.